Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. I want to thank my sponsors, Top Spinini, Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So here's uh, an episode for your listening enjoyment. In, like talking about inserts, generally it'd be in the flagship pack. In fact, the ones that are tougher are the ones only in certain series, if you're talking about the 60s. The stamps Rich talked about previously, those were all inserts originally. They did it. 61 and 62, 69 and 74, I believe. I don't remember ever getting a 74 stamp out of a pack, but 61s and 2s were definitely in the packs. In my neighborhood, they were appreciated. They were interesting. But if it was so well received, why do they do it two years in a row? And then stop in 63. The 62s are way nicer than the 61s to me, artistically. And so they're on a roll. Why don't they keep going? In 63, they go to the transfers, which aren't anywhere nearly as nice. They hit you for an extra 10 cents if you wanted to buy the booklet for those stamps, 61 and 62. Yeah, the transfers were pretty ugly. Insert. I think... This early run by Tops was directly because of Flair's competition. They had cards out those years, and they wanted to give you a little something extra in your pack. Well, if they're sitting on the counter and there's a box of Flair and a box of Tops, even though Tops was the standard, Flair, if they got shelf space, they were going to be potentially a competitor. Football in the 60s, in the early 60s, there's real competition for Tops in football. Flair and then Philly Gum is doing it, and yet there's less inserts in football packs where you had real competition than there is in baseball. But some of those inserts in football are extremely tough as well. The Philadelphia gum, they were hard to catalog. Tops pumped out the inserts in the early 60s. They went everywhere with them. Baseball bucks, the peel-offs from 63. Were the tattoos inserts or were they a separate They were out on their own, I believe. I think 60s are a separate set. I don't remember about 63s. I know 72 was separate tattoos. Yeah. But we were talking about this with test issues, and there are some things that just kept popping up. Coins pop up in 64 and 71. And those were interesting. You know, there were always coin collectors. It sounded like a good thing to do. I'm surprised they didn't do coins more often. Or stamps more often, what were considered more mainstream hobby in those days. Coins are three-dimensional and are problematic in that way. Stamps wouldn't be. But I never thought about this till just now, and that is that all these inserts we're talking about were not random. They were one per pack of a certain pack. So if you had a box of 24 packs of Topps cards, you were going to get 24 inserts. And somehow over the last decades now, there's this uncertainty, this lottery aspect of that you're going to get one per box. And so the packing out process of seeding, they didn't have to worry about that. Every pack of that series, if it said that on the box, they're all going to get that. So it's deterministic. We can get some production quantities. And I'm sure in the early 60s, some of that stuff was thrown out. I'm sure not as the best stamps were held 69 on. 69 deck colleges, which are definitely inserts and packs because I bought them from the packs. Yeah. There are variations in the de- deck colleges. Cards 11 and 22. Can you tell me what <coughs> happened? Why we have variations? You would think a 33 card insert set that you're doing in one series would be sufficient. Why are you changing? It's Foy and Wilhelm and Jimmy Wynn is one of the other players involved. And It's really weird. In printing process, it's a hassle to go back to press or to change out the form. So there had to be a reason. And either somebody said, I don't want to be in the set, or we need to put this guy in. I actually don't remember opening packs from 69, even though I know I must have, because I have a ton of them. But I didn't have more than one or two Deckle Edge cards in my collection. Deckle Edge is the third series, if I remember correctly. It's black and white. I just think kids... Even kids in those days, black and white wasn't as good as color. So did they esteem those decalages? I don't know that they did. When you're a kid and you're opening a pack, if you didn't get a player on the card, 
even some of the team leaders, rookie cards, team photos, you just didn't care as much about those. Checklists, as a kid anyway, you didn't. You wanted to see the actual player. Which is what most of the inserts were. They were about players. You're noteworthy as a team collector, but you're also a player collector. And most people are player collectors. They want their team, but they want recognizable players too. And not a flag or a pennant or a a team photo where everybody's got a microscopic portion of it. A lot of these inserts, the rarity now is if kids use them for what they were made for, sticking them on other things, there's not going to be that many of them left. Besides the amount that just got chucked out. 67 posters, they were an insert in 67, and then they made them larger, but then they became a test issue in 68. That's like the exact reverse. The 69 posters are huge. Most people don't even want them. Right. I don't. And yet they've got like 11 players on each thing. You're guaranteed really almost a good to great player on just about every one of those posters. And And those are not that easy to get. No. I have the Red Sox one frame. That's Otherwise, it. I don't know about how you would keep them. Yeah, fold them up. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you, you have a them? favorite of the 60s and 70s tops insert sets? I guess I like the stamps. 62s are really nice. Okay. Any of those inserts caused you aggravation and just trying to find? The peel-offs were tough to find because those got damaged. Some of the stamps, they were in two pad pieces and they were torn i don't think any of them are really that hard to find i think the devils are definitely the easiest but a lot of the stuff i think just got used the definition of insert is completely changed now when we're talking about the 60s and 70s the inserts were not a standard size card that you would in any way confuse with the regular issue They were a different medium. They were a stamp. They were a decal. Nowadays, if you talk to the modern collector, the younger collector now, if you talk about an insert, it just means a different design that's seated in the current packs. An interesting subset that's numbered with a prefix instead of in the numbering of the set. Maybe if you look at it that way, you don't understand the charm and the interest of these legitimate one per pack, not always saved inserts from the 60s they're tough tough even the like the scratch offs that you got in 70 and 71 if you used them to play the game they're damaged i guess and they have different colors you actually have to open it up to know whether it's a 70 or 71 you can't just tell from the outside so i guess they were made as throwaways they were made for kids they want to engage the kids and I don't think that was very successful, (laughs) but again, I wasn't the target market then. I actually played and scratched off some of those scratch off games. Did it make you buy more cards though? It was actually fun. It was actually interesting. Okay. Okay. I played it as a kid. Yeah. Okay. So maybe the success of that concept was not that it became valuable, although they ought to be more valuable in their untouched state. But if it sold more Tops cards. Tops probably felt we're giving you something extra. And if we can keep making money, give you something extra, it's a win for us. And as you said, sell more cards. And what was interesting is you've noticed they almost never do this in the last series. The series you would think that they're not selling any cards of. They're always having trouble selling the high numbers, the last series. Shouldn't that have been the series you put the inserts in to try to really boost up the sales? Okay, one more thought. This is going back to the test issues and the inserts. Any insert back in those days that went into a pack had to have biodegradable, whatever, some kind of treatment because it was a food product if it had gum in there. But I'm wondering if it's a test issue. Some of the test issues have vivid ink and presentation to where if they didn't put gum in the test issue pack, if they were even in packs, they could have a higher quality of ink on paper in some of those test issues because they never had to be a Food and Drug Administration approved inks and papers and things like that. Maybe that's why they never went further than they did, because they couldn't get it approved. 
it's a good point. Were they even thinking about biodegradable in 1966? The first Earth Day is 1970. No, I'm saying if the giant stand-ups in 68 with all that heavy black, that black was toxic. And so if you gave that to your kid or your dog and they chewed on it, they would get sick. <laughs> I'm making this up, but I'm just saying <laughs> if gum is in there and Tops is releasing, it has to have these special inks because a kid could put it in his mouth. And frankly, that would be a teething aspect for those 68 giant standups because they were whatever point that would be, a 200 point thickness. Just the size of these test issues were different from a regular card. Bigger, smaller. Was Tops even wanting them to be successful? If you go from a two and a half by three and a half to a five by seven, which seems like it's doubling, but it's really four times the card real estate, you've just increased your cost of cardboard or card stock and probably ink as well. You've multiplied by four. And what we know in the hobby, people don't even want to pay the same price, much less double or four times. The you know what I find surprising today? They didn't do the size of the 50s cards. The 52s, the 56s. I'm surprised they just didn't go back to that size. That's a very popular size. I think it's the size of the sheets. Their sweet spot was 57 tops, realizing apparently standard presses could easily run that without a lot of waste. It had to cost money to make these test issues. Different size adhesives, packaging in some cases. But it's not complicated layered printing in most cases, like the modern cards are now when you've got embedded where you have a sticker autograph or a regular autograph or game use material in there. It's ink on cardboard, and then you cut it. There are printers that can do the die cutting. It doesn't even require a Cardamundi or any of these fancier printers now that have all these other capabilities. Any printing place that had a sheet-fed printer that could die cut, that could cut up the cards. It's like making a box of something. And yet the printing was high quality on some of these test issues yeah. and some of the inserts. In fact, the inserts, you're not going to print up stamps at the same place you're going to do cards. Those are different processes, different printing and publishing equipment. And the adhesive on the back and the humidity required, like I said, putting it in with gum in those cases. They had to get their stamps from somewhere else their gum maybe from somewhere else in the cards once they cut up the cards and they're assembling them in the wax packs and then shipping them. It's fun to see what they come out with each year in Heritage to see which pieces they pull to put into these packs. In the golden age, what we're talking about, the test issues were like case hits. They weren't distributed that way, but equivalent toughness to that. And the inserts were box hits or something like that. Even though they're one per pack, they're really hard now. Now, though, the case hits are something special. The box things are some very special design. But the run-of-the-mill inserts that are one per pack are a dime a dozen now. Even when they have these interesting designs, if it's one per pack, it's not going to be challenging. Yet in the 60s, if it was one per pack for that series, nowadays it's really challenging. And the test right. issues are just not even to be found. It's sure fun to talk about them and go look for them, though. 